Hi, welcome to Web Frontier Family Bushcraft, and today I'm going to teach you about camping gear, survival gear. Basically, what you need to take with you when you're exploring, adventuring, and I've broken this down into two categories. One, the first category, is priority survival, emergency survival. So priority survival, and then number two is luxury survival. So I'll show you some of my gear. First on the list is priority survival. So this is what you need with priority. So you always want to have a first aid kit. Now, this is a first aid kit. This will treat cuts, burns, scrapes, and bee stings. So you always need to have a first aid kit with you. Now there's two types of first aid kits. There's this one, and then depending on where you're at, there's this one. So you always want to have these two. This is really good, this one right here. This one's really good for desert survival and tropical rainforest where there's venomous creatures like water moccasins, rattlesnakes, scorpions. You always want to have this because if you get bit by a rattlesnake or scorpion, this will save your life. And then this is a basic first aid kit for like northwestern, northwestern territories areas where you won't really have venomous creatures like scorpions, rattlesnakes, water moccasins, killer bees, things like that. It's always good to have this, but make sure you get both of them because you never know when you're going to end up in what climate you're in, but always prepare, always be prepared. So desert climate, venomous creatures. This is a venomous first aid kit. This is the basic first aid kit. Have both of these. That's a priority. Priority survival gear. Compass road map to get you to the point where you're going to hike topographic map for the area you're hiking in these are priorities you need these backed up with a first aid kit and a fire starter you need these things map compass topographic map for the area you're hiking first aid kit fire starter those things you need, those are essential survival things and they should always be kept in the trunk of your car. This whole priority survival kit should be kept in your car. You never know when you're going to break down and when you're going to need it. Life is full of danger. Learn how to survive. And number two on the list after first aid kit, when you're out there in the wilderness, you need to start a fire so you can distill water, cleanse water and cook food to get rid of bacteria and things like that and also provide heat and scare away predators so you need one of these one of these magnesium fire starters these are excellent you just scrape off this side and you scrape that off on the tinder I'll show you all this later how to actually use this I'll show you how to use these things basically you scrape off flakes with the uh, scraper here you scrape off flakes on this side and then you scrape across here to ignite the flakes on your tinder and that's how you start a fire and then the rest is kind of like a luxury but this is in the priority kit all this stuff is priority so the first aid kit the fire starter and everything I'm about to show you I'll let you know when I switch from priority to luxury but you always want a multi-tool this is great this is a rover tack this is a tactical multi-tool it has a knife with a serrated edge right there in the regular edge and then it has several things it has a um, screwdriver can opener slash bottle opener there's actually two of them on here you got two can openers two bottle openers and then also some pliers you never know when you're going to need pliers and this, it also comes with a screwdriver drill set, drill tip set for screwdrivers, flathead, and Phillips. You can get those on Amazon. I'll post a link in the description later. For, but multi tool, survival kit. And a flashlight. You always want to have a flashlight. Now, when you purchase the survival flashlight, Make sure you get a flashlight that's capable of sending an SOS, a strobe light. Make sure it's capable of strobe light because if you're lost out in the woods you need to signal a plane or signal for help from people that you see. See, this is the regular light, see, on the wall. 
This is regular. That's a strobe. You use, you use this light when you're in an emergency situation. When you're stranded and you see survivors, this is an SOS signal. When you put this signal out there, people will know to rescue you. It's also called a strobe light, but primarily this is SOS for emergency rescue situations. So make sure your flashlight has that. And plus, get you some gloves. You need to have gloves. Because you don't want to cut yourself. You could get infected. You could get septus. You could lose your fingers if you're in a survival situation and you get infected. And these ones are really great. I'll show you why. You put these on, they completely cover the fingers, but also, let's say you needed to use, let's say you needed your fingers out there. So these are willing to expose the first three fingers. Your thumb and your two first fingers, your index and your middle finger. You can do that. These are great. They're less than $20. These are great gloves. Perfect for survival situations, hunting, fishing. Wood crafting things. And then next, make sure you have some binoculars. Let's say you're out in the Northwest Territory. Make sure you have some binoculars. And now, most of this stuff in the priority kit can fit on your belt. Also, make sure you have some binoculars. And now, the cool thing about these binoculars and like most of the tools in the priority kit is that they have this belt loop. You can fit them on your belt, so it's really light. You can really travel light. They fit on your belt. But you need binoculars because it increases your protection. A uh, grizzly bear in your eyesight. You don't want to just wait until you see a grizzly bear in your eyesight. You want to have some warning. You want to know where the grizzly bear is. And with a set of binoculars, you can see vast, far distances. You can see vast, far distances. You can see the grizzly bear coming from really far away. So you always need some binoculars. And if it has a belt loop, that's great. Because then it can fit on your belt. You can travel extra light. It's always good to travel light. Make sure you have a priority survival kit at all times. Even in your car, I would recommend keeping it in your car. You never know when you're, you're traveling cross country and your car breaks down. You need a priority survival kit. A mess kit. You can get these at Walmart for six dollars a mess kit it's got a Here. mess kit it's got a, a frying pan a plate to eat with cup to drink water and a pot for boiling you need to have these and they're so convenient so convenient and really important Make sure you have your compass with you. This should be in the top of the list right after the survival kit and the fire starter. Make sure you have your compass, your road map, and your topographic map of the area you wish to explore. Never go on an adventure without your map and compass and first aid kit. Those are priority. And rope. You always want to have a good amount of rope for building shelters, making tools, climbing down cliffs, belaying. You always want to have some rope. And sanitary wipes so you can keep clean to reduce the risk of infection. You always want to have sanitary wipes. All this stuff in the Essential Priority Survival Kit is cheap. You can purchase a Essential Priority Survival Kit for less than $80. An ax, 
next. This can go on your belt. Most of these things in the survival kit can go on your belt. I'll show you later when I have my uh, miniature survival pack. I'll show you what the priority survival kit looks like with the uh, luxury survival kit. Yeah. Okay, so now we're moving on to the luxury survival kit. Now the priority survival kit, that's what you need for when you face with emergency situations. First aid, fire starter, mapping compass, binoculars, gloves, multi-tool. All those things I showed you in the priority survival kit are very important. You need those. You should keep those in the trunk of your car at all times. You never know when your car is going to break down and you get lost. You never know. But we're going to show you the luxury survival kit. Thanks for having fun, like luxuries. The first luxury is the backpack. Now this backpack is perfect. It's actually two backpacks in one. This is from the Ozark Trail Outdoor Equipment. It's actually two packs in one. It's got a day pack and a big pack. This is the day pack. It's a tiny, really small, portable pack. Now this is a luxury, but yeah, this is a luxury. It's the day pack. You can fit all your priority survival get. It's a day pack. You can fit all your priority survival gear in this small, tiny little pack with a belt. Most of the stuff in the priority survival kit goes on your belt. They all have belt loops. So this Ozark Trail Outdoor Survival backpack is great. It comes with a day pack and then a big pack. You can leave this one at your campsite. Keep your main survival gear in here. And then, yeah. Also, in your luxury pack is a sleeping bag. Now, a sleeping bag is pretty good, pretty important. If you have your survival kit, maybe in your luxury pack, all you got is a sleeping bag. That's good, but make sure you have your priority survival kit with you. Sleeping bag. A tent. Make sure you get easy to carry stuff. Easy to carry. It's small, it's portable, it fits right in the, the luxury pack. fishing pole gold panning kit this is all luxury maybe you're out in the woods by a river and you want to pan for some gold you need a gold panning kit glue glue is really good and if you wanted to you can put this in your priority survival kit it's not really a priority you can make glue out of natural things. I'll show you this later in future videos, how to make glue. But glue, you can put it in your priority bag, but it's not really a necessity. It's more like a luxury. Cooking utensils. These are extra cooking utensils, like a, a spoon for soups, spatula for eggs, and tong. You can use tongs for lots of things. Also, one thing I forgot to show you, is now back to the priority survival kit. If we go back over here to the priority survival kit. Emergency fishing kit. Look how tiny it is. This is a survival fishing kit. Basic version. These are cheap man. They're less than ten dollars. You can get them on Amazon. I'll show you how to make your own makeshift survival fishing kit later. But these are important. You need this in your priority bag. Survival kit. And also basic silverware. These are cheap too. They're less than $10. Survival silverware to go with your mess kit and your priority bag. This is all your priority bag. Most of it can go on your belt buckle. I'll show you later what the priority bag and the, uh, the luxury bag looks like when assembled. Also, I have extra right in the rain notebooks. This goes in the luxury bag. 
extra writing the rain notebooks. Make sure you keep one of these in your priority bag. You always need a write in the rain notebook. I keep mine in my back pocket. I have my write in the rain pen always in my pocket. And my write in the rain notebook always in my back pocket. I also always keep my map and compass in my back pocket too. And also a uh, fishing tackle. If you got your fishing pole in your luxury bag, Get some fishing tackle. This, you know, this is luxury. You can catch any kind of fish with this fishing tackle. Just make sure you got a fishing license and follow the regulations. And also, a draw knife. This is in the luxury bag. This is for bow crafting. Because I can craft a bow with my utility knife and the axe. The draw knife is a luxury. Hi. Welcome to episode two of Web Family Bushcraft, but I'm actually changing the name to Web Frontier Family Bushcraft just because we're frontiersmen. The Web Family is a frontiers family. We love exploring, adventuring, and all of that stuff. And this is a good channel for you to learn the fundamentals of navigation, compassing, map and compassing, adventuring, survival, things like that. So just stay tuned. We'll, you'll see lots of good things that are beneficial to you. And everything that I preach, I practice. I don't teach things that I've never done. Like if I taught you how to, like, a, like let's say a barrel cactus. I'm out in the woods and I'm teaching you about edible plants in the high desert of California, Southern California. You will see me eat the plant later on. I would never tell you to eat something that I myself haven't eaten or tried myself. So, yeah, nothing to be worried about. But I will say this. Make sure you seek expert opinion. Make sure you get authenticated resources. Don't just trust me because you've seen this video on YouTube. Don't just trust me, man. I may be capable of surviving, but don't just trust my sources. Don't trust this information. Make sure you get credible sources from experts, professionals, things that come from the government. Government sources, those are the things you want to stick to. You want to get reliable sources of information. Don't just trust anybody. Because I've seen videos on YouTube like the, like my previous video, the calibrating the compass to magnetic declination. I'm going to go over this several times. But I've seen uh, major million dollar corporations. One of the corporations is uh, Ray Co-op. R-E-I Co-op. Ray Co-op. They were teaching magnetic declination improperly. They were teaching people that with a western declination, you turn the dial westernly. But that would actually put magnetic north east of true north. And if you research this properly from the proper resources, then you will find out that a western declination means you rotate the bezel clockwise because a western declination says that magnetic north is west of true north. And there's people out there that are teaching it improperly. So we're going to talk about a few things on this episode of Web Frontier Family Bushcraft. And one thing we're going to talk about is the truth about survival TV. Now, I love watching Survivor Man, Man, Woman, Wild, Dual Survival, Man vs. Wild. I love watching that shit. But it's entertainment. That's not real stuff. That's not stuff you want to mimic. You, you don't want to go out in the wilderness and uh, feed off of rattlesnakes and scorpions. You don't want to pee in a snake skin and drink it. That's all for TV. You don't want to mimic these things. It's very important. It's TV. This is not something you want to imitate in a real, true-to-life situation. You could die. You could die if you mimic these things you see on TV, even though it's survival. You don't want to mimic those things. Like on the, uh, Dual Survival, you don't want to do that. i seen on Dual Survival, there was a situation where the guy cut himself to demonstrate how to close a wound if you were injured in the wilderness. But it's stupid. It's not applicable. You're going to cut yourself, pour black powder in the wound, and then ignite it to cauterize the wound? That's not applicable. That's for TV. That's entertainment. You don't want to do these things. They'll get you killed. And also, on these things like Survivor Man, there's, I think it's, I'll quote this later. I'll do an episode on the truth about survival TV. But in Survivor Man, there's this episode where he's talking about a family that was 1,400 feet from their vehicle in the woods, and they got lost. 
and the whole episode was him teaching them what to do if you're lost in the woods and you need to survive. But never once, never once in this video did he teach how to prevent yourself from being lost by using proper map and compass navigation skills. Never once, never in the whole series did he ever teach any of these survival guys on TV. They will never teach you how to prevent yourself from being lost. They don't teach you how to prevent, how to protect yourself. They do not teach you how to protect yourself from getting lost. It's entertainment. It's not real. So, you always got to remember when you watch the survival TV, like Man, Woman, Wild, Man vs. Wild, Survivor Man, and Dual Survival. You always got to remember, it's just TV. Do not be convinced. Don't be persuaded by these things. It's not real. It's not real. It's TV. They're actors. They all, and you see this on YouTube all the time. Experts. Experts teaching you how to survive, what to do when you get lost. But when an actual real person that has the experience of living this survival watches these videos, there's things that don't make sense. They're doing things, they're teaching things wrong, they're doing it improperly. Just do not follow them. Make sure you back it up with credentials. And if somebody's teaching you to eat, like say you're going out in the woods and they're teaching you how to survive off the land eating wild edible plants, Make sure they eat the plants first. Don't just eat it because it can be poisonous. Make sure you see them eat it and stuff like that, you know. Just be safe. Just be prepared. They take unnecessary risks and are often hypocrites. They're always contradicting themselves. They'll say, yeah, like on uh, Dual Survival, Cody Lundin, he says, yeah, if the risk outweighs the benefit, don't do it. They're always eating bugs, insects. Rattlesnakes and scorpions. If you're in a survival situation, you're not going to live off of 50 ants. You're not going to go and eat ants or bugs, larvae. You're not going to do that. That's not enough protein. That's not enough calories. Uh, one ant is like two calories, an ant. So you're going to eat 50 ants. That's not real, man. That's on TV. You're gonna, eating bugs and cockroaches and insects and scorpions and rattlesnakes. Now I will admit, a rattlesnake does have a quite amount, quite a good amount of meat on it, but it can kill you. So you don't want to go after these things. You want to avoid these things in a real, true-to-life survival situation. Rattlesnakes and scorpions in a real, true-to-life survival situation. You don't go hunting rattlesnakes and scorpions, especially scorpions. They're like this big, man. Scorpion. They're tiny. Scorpions are tiny. They have minimal amount of nutrients. They got maybe like 50 calories. A scorpion, you might find a big scorpion has like, what, 100 calories? That's not a good amount of nutrition in a survival situation. You want to go after big animals. If you're out there in the woods, you want to go after coyotes, bobcats, mountain lions, jackrabbits. But you also want to have a hunter's license. And bobcats are actually prohibited. You can't hunt bobcats in Southern California anymore. And mountain lions are protected. You can't hunt mountain lions anywhere. So coyotes and jackrabbits. Coyotes and jackrabbits are the two sources of food out, in their, out there in the wilderness. Coyotes and jackrabbits. If you get one coyote, the meat on a coyote will last you about a week. If you're by yourself, more than a week. Um, but you'll see this later. You will find uh, actual videos of me hunting coyotes and jackrabbits. I will demonstrate these for you. This is not just talk. I'm going to be demonstrating this for you on my YouTube channel. I will be, me and my family, this is Web Frontier Family Bushcraft. We will be out there in the wilderness surviving off coyotes, jackrabbits, and fishing and true survival techniques, barrel cactuses. I will actually be making saguaro wine with my wife. We will be making saguaro wine and drinking it and getting drunk, celebrating off of saguaro wine. So just just be real, man. Just be real.